Good morning, everybody. I kind of wonder uh, what this last week was for Gordy because he thought Easter was two weeks ago and that was just last Sunday. So um, it's still good. It's all right. Sometimes we have weeks like that, right? It's like, man, a month ago. Yeah, that was just a couple days ago. Um, so glad you guys are here with us today. Actually, before we get started, I want to invite Sammy up on stage. Uh, Sammy Flippin is uh, one of our staff members. Uh, and honestly, here at the church, there's a lot of people who kind of work behind the scenes that you don't always get to see. You know, Sammy hasn't been leading worship or bringing a message on a Sunday, but she, uh, for this last year, has been serving as our graphic designer and our kids' curriculum lead. Um, so this wonderful graphic that's behind us, she made that. She's incredibly talented. Um, Sammy started with us last summer. She was a summer intern with us after she had graduated from Central Washington. Uh, and now God is calling her into a new season that we're excited about. As you know, we are a sending church. And so uh, I'm going to let her explain what God is doing in her and what uh, she's expecting him to do through her in this next season. So here you go. Yeah, so over the last several months, um, in addition to working here, I've also been able to serve at Chi Alpha, which is a campus ministry up at Central Washington University. Um, and recently, um, the Lord has opened a door for me to take a full-time graphic design position with the university. Um, and yeah, it's just a great opportunity for me to not only work in my field, but also continue to serve and be a light um, on a secular campus. And so... I'm really excited for this new role that he's called me into. Unfortunately, that means leaving here for the time being. Um, but thank you so much, church, for having me and for letting me play out a role here over the last year. So, yeah. Uh, we really have loved having Sammy here. It's one of those funny things that she's incredibly talented, um, first of all. And I was so excited because I actually was, I was her eighth grade Bible teacher at Riverside. Um, and then so for her to come and work for me, it was like, yeah, this is awesome. Um, but I was excited when this opportunity at Central came because I was like, oh, they're going to call me for a recommendation. And I'm just going to like lay it out there. But her portfolio spoke enough for her and she, they didn't have to call me. They just hired her. Um, <laughs> But what's really cool is about what she is doing and what this group of friends that she has up there, what they're doing is they're living out their mission in the marketplace. Uh, and, they're, and they've done this now as community and say, hey, let's, let's be a light for Jesus here at this school campus. And so as much as she's taking a job, which is awesome, it's going to be a great job for her, she's very much mission to what God's going to do on that campus through her and through her friends. And so as her church family, she's not like leaving, leaving, but she's just not going to be around here as much, um, is we as our church family want to pray for her. I have some anointing oil that I'm going to anoint her with. And so will you guys just extend your hands towards her as she heads into this new season of ministry and we can be praying for her. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Sammy. Lord, we thank you for the call that you have placed on her life, Lord Jesus, and her obedience uh, to what you are doing in her and through her, Lord Jesus. I pray your blessing over this season that she is entering into. Lord Jesus, I pray that through her graphic design, she will have doors open to her with relationships uh, with different people uh, at the school, both students and faculty and staff. Uh, Lord Jesus, I pray that as this community she has built with other um, students and graduates as they love on this community, Lord, that you will just put your favor over them, Lord, as they are truly the hands and feet of you on that campus. Uh, and Lord Jesus, I pray um, that through uh, the Chi Alpha ministry and through these people, Lord, that you will move in powerful ways at Central Washington University. We love you, Jesus. We're so thankful for Sammy. Have your hands all over her, Lord Jesus, in this next season and lead her, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you, girl. Proud of you. Isn't that awesome? Sending missionaries onto college campuses. That's good stuff. 
Um, Chantal uh, wanted to be here with you guys this week, wanted to give you a little bit of an update about how, what her uh, cancer journey has been and what uh, really God's been doing in that. But uh, at her infusion on Wednesday, we found out that her white blood cell count was pretty low. And so they said, hey, you've got two more infusions to go. Why don't you just stay away from people for a little bit? Um, so that way we can get through this thing. So she's not here today because you guys all like to hug her all the time. And so she stayed home. Um, but just wanted you guys to know how thankful we are uh, for your love and your support and your prayers uh, and your generosity towards us. It really has been incredible. And I'm, we're celebrating because uh, this Wednesday will be her second to last infusion, uh, which means, you know, a week from Wednesday, she will be done with chemo, um, which is uh, really exciting. 16, 16 rounds of chemo is a lot of chemo. And so we are ready to be done with that, ready to be on to the next thing. Uh, she has surgery scheduled for June 12th, and so we're just praying uh, that God will continue to move the way he has, uh, that there won't be any setbacks. And so um, she'll be up here back in a couple weeks and be able to tell you more of what God has been doing in her and through her. Um, but just want to again thank you guys for your love and your support in this season. At the beginning of the year, we launched 2023 with this word for the year being equipped. That we were to be equipped people. We all recognize that we are called by Jesus to live out this walk with him, right? And we all have different settings that we do that in. But we need to recognize that God has empowered us and will equip us for the good work that he has called us to. But also equip us against the lies of the enemy. I want to read to you... Uh, out of Ephesians 6, this is actually the same verse that I opened up this year preaching about on our Vision Sunday. And it's the text that is known as the, the armor of God text. But this is what Paul wrote. He said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Isn't that good? I've been reading a book uh, called Live No Lies. It's written by John Mark Comer. This is a great book. He's a great author, great pastor. Um, but this book, uh, as long, along with some of the things we're reading in Scripture, has been driving the thoughts behind this series that we are getting into, Equipped Against Lies. And one of the things that we see throughout Scripture, uh, and even in the verse that we just read, um, is that in our lives following Jesus, we are in a battle. We are in a battle, and honestly, it's a battle for our very souls. See, we live in a world that is full of lies. And throughout Scripture, three main enemies, there are three main enemies that we face in our battle against lies. And they are the devil, our flesh, and the world, or the worldly perspective. See, over the course of this series, we're going to be taking a closer look at these three enemies, and we're going to work on being equipped against the lies that they try to tear us down with. And those influences are becoming more and more prevalent in our lives. See, part of the reality of, the, of our lives as Christians here in the U.S. is that we are not going to be the majority of people in the U.S. for that much longer unless something changes. The Barna Group, which does uh, studies in the Christian and, and, and public world, um, they say that even though 65% of Americans identify as Christians, only 49% of millennials identify as Christians, and only 10% of young adults within Generation Z claim to be resilient followers of Jesus. Now, I truly believe that revival is breaking out among our younger generation. Like, I think God is doing something powerful, but our culture has shifted from a, a culture of honor to a culture of shame. The church is not held with the same respect that it once was. Many in our culture actually believe that the church is part of the problem, not the solution. And in some ways, they might be right. The Christian worldview is no longer tolerated by culture, but is instead met with hostility. John Mark Comer said that we are actually more in exile now as Christians then we are driving culture as we once had been. A writer, Walter Brueggemann, defines exile as the experience of knowing that one is an alien, not of this world, 
and perhaps even in a hostile environment where the dominant values run counter to one's own. Christians are now countercultural in this world that we live in. Our culture is no, long, it no longer reflects Christianity, it reflects the world. We're now the rebels. We are now the revolutionaries. We are like the Israelites exiled in Babylon, allowed to live our lives, allowed to have our faith, but pressured with lies to try to change who we are meant to be. And trust me, we are in a battle. And today, I want to talk about the first of these three enemies that we're going to cover in this series, and the one that is the most dangerous enemy that we have, and that is the devil. One author writes, our fight with the devil is first and foremost a fight to take back control of our minds from their captivity to lies and liberate them with the weapon of truth. And what is the weapon of truth? Well, Jesus says in John 8 that if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, in this chapter in John 8, there were those who were against Jesus, these religious leaders who didn't like him saying that. They were trying to combat Jesus, saying, you know, we, we're descendants of Abraham. Like, we, we, we don't have to be free of anything. Like, what do we have to be set free from? We're slaves to no one. And then Jesus' response was, very truly, I tell you, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And then he pretty much said, and that's you guys, <laughs> You're the sinners, which made them upset for some reason. I don't really know. And they claimed, well, we don't have to listen to you, Jesus, because you're not our father. Only God is our father, and so we'll listen to him. We don't want to have to listen to you. And Jesus said, well, if you say you are following God the Father, then you should listen to me because I came from the Father. And then Jesus made this statement, which assigned them a different father. And Jesus said, you belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, this contextually was directed to those religious leaders that Jesus was having a conversation with. But I believe that it also reveals to us three truths from the mouth of Jesus, which is the best place to find truth. From the mouth of Jesus that help us understand the reality of the devil's activity in this world. And the first, tr first truth that we can see there is that for Jesus, there is a devil. The Greek word in John 8 that Jesus uses is the word diabolos, which means the accuser. Which is just one of the many names given to this creature in scripture. In other places, he's also called Satan, or the evil one, or the tempter, or the destroyer, or the deceiver. Or in Revelation, he's the great dragon who deceives the world, and the ancient serpent who leads the world astray. Now, there is a movement in our world today, even within the church, that is trying to discredit the reality of the devil and even hell. They're saying, ah, oh, that's all made up stuff. That doesn't, that's not real. They think they've outthought the Bible. But if anyone would know of the existence of either, it would be Jesus. And Jesus regularly speaks of their existence. And three different times he calls the devil the prince of this world. And the Greek word that for prince would have been this, this uh, political word used for a high-ranking official. So every time Jesus said he is the prince of this world, it's like he's saying he is a high-ranking official of this world. John Mark Comer says Jesus was saying that this creature is the most powerful and influential creature in our world. And we can see that because when Jesus was being tempted by Satan in the desert after he was baptized, Satan tried to offer him all the nations, all the kingdoms of this world as if they were his to give. So for Jesus, the devil is real, not a myth. He is a real intelligence that is at work in our world who has more influence and power than any other creature in the universe after God. And the devil is behind so much evil that takes place in us and in our society. Peter wrote in 1 Peter, Be alert and of, sober mind, and of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is real. And the devil has a mission against the people of God and his creation. 
The second truth that we can pick up about the devil from Jesus' statement in John 8 is that for Jesus, the devil's end goal is to spread death. The devil's end goal is to spread death. John 10.10, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The thief, the devil, comes to steal, comes to kill, comes to destroy. Wherever he finds life, he tries to break it down. He defaces beauty. He corrupts love. He divides unity, and he causes confusion and hostility across humanity. And this is why following Jesus often feels like a war, because it is. It's not easy to advance daily into the kingdom of God because there's opposition from the devil himself. And I don't know about you, maybe it's just my awareness of it, but I feel his opposition every day. I woke up this morning just feeling off. I was like, man, well, I, just, like, I had like pit in my stomach. I was like, what is this? Man, I just feel, it feels weird, it feels a little off today. And I was showering and I realized, oh, that's why. Because I'm ratting the devil out this morning. <laughs> I'm exposing him. He's like, wait a minute. You tell them about me, then they're not going to believe my lies. C.S. Lewis, who is an incredible uh, author in Christianity, if you've never read any of his books, you should read all of his books because they really are that great. But he says, there is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch, every split second is claimed by God and then counterclaimed by Satan. You might not want to hear this, but there's no way out of this battle. but there are weapons of truth that can be used against it. We have an adversary who wants to spread death. That is his mission. And the third observation from Jesus' statement in John 8 is that for Jesus, the devil's weapon is lies. It's lies. Let me read to you again that text from John 8. He said, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. The father of lies, meaning the origin point of deception. And here's the issue that we face as followers of Jesus. We know this to be true of the devil. We know that he is a liar, and yet his lies can be so subtle that we don't recognize what he's doing. You may have heard it said before, that the greatest lie the devil has ever given was getting people to believe that he doesn't exist. Because the devil's lies are subtle. He's sneaky. If you don't believe in him, that's just like, ah, free reign. See, we give the devil credit for the big evil things that we see or experience in our lives. But we'll miss the subtle lie. We blame the devil for natural disasters or major illnesses like cancer or intense tragedy that hits our world. And hear me on this. He has a role in some of, if not all of those things. But here in John 8, in in the most in-depth teaching on the devil that we find in the four Gospels, Jesus just mentions his lies. That he's a liar. The devil is the father of lies. There's no truth in him. So we have to listen to the advice of our Bible. Listen to the advice that Paul gives when he says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. He's scheming against God's people. Over these next five weeks in this series, we're going to look more in depth at the lies of the devil. That's going to be next week. And then we're going to look at the flesh and we're going to look at the world. And maybe this sermon doesn't feel very hopeful because I'm like, hey, everyone, we're at war. But hear me on this. The devil is real. But Jesus is our Savior. And the Holy Spirit is our Helper. 1 John 3, 8 says, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 
Colossians 2.15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. See, our battle against the lies of the enemy is doable because of Jesus and because his Holy Spirit dwells within us, giving us the same authority that Jesus has to overcome the schemes of our enemy. But we have to be aware of his reality and his lies. I want to close our time today considering some of the devil's lies in our lives. Because I think that they've affected all of us at one level or not. Lies like you're unworthy. Lies like you are broken. Lies like you've been too bad of a person to do what God wants you to do. That your sinfulness disqualifies you. These are all lies I've believed in my life. They're all lies that held me back for years. I want to speak the truth of Jesus over you. You are loved. You are so loved. And you are worthy. And Jesus already paid the price for your sin by dying on the cross for you. That is the truth. And it is that truth that helps me every single day. And it's that truth that equips us against the lies that we face every day in our lives. So don't believe the lies. And put on the full armor of God because we are at war. And our enemy is the father of lies. So we have to be prepared. We have to be aware. Lord Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your sacrifice for us. And I thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us, to dwell within us. Lord, because we recognize that as we follow you, we are in a battle against the enemy. And Lord Jesus, I pray for any of us in here who've had to battle the lies of our enemy, Lord, that you will speak your truth over us, Jesus. We praise you this morning. I have two questions for us as we close out. The first one, and we give this opportunity every single week, is that if you've never stepped into a relationship with Jesus, you've never said yes to him, you've never invited him into your life, it's the most important decision you can ever make in your life. He is your savior. And so if you're here and you've never made that decision and you want to make that decision today, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to him because you've been living life on your own for far too long, well, you just raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. I need to give my life to Jesus or I need to rededicate my life to him. Yeah, I see you. Awesome. I see you. I see you. Awesome. We're with you. Anybody else? Yeah, I see you back there. Awesome. We're with you. Praise God. You know what's even greater than me seeing you? Jesus sees you. He sees your response. And he sees your heart. The second question that I want to ask today is as we've ta been talking about the lies of the enemy, the lies of the devil, if you feel like you are either currently experiencing or have really experienced the lies of the enemy in your past or in your present, and I'm going to include myself in this, will you just raise your hand too and say, that's me. Man, he's all the time. Yeah, a lot of us. He's pretty active. Man. Will you guys stand with me? I just want to pray a blessing over all of us 
because whether you are just making a decision now to either give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to Jesus, or if you've been doing this for a long time and just recognize, man, I'm in a battle every single day of my lives. We need to lock arms together, put on the full armor of God and be ready and be aware of the lies that are gonna come against us. So Lord Jesus, I pray for every single person in this room. Lord Jesus, that your hand will be upon them. Lord Jesus, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, you will be able to speak truth into them and when they are experiencing the lies of the enemy. Lord, just like I was this morning and you spoke life into me, the truth of who we are and who we are called to be and how much we are loved and how much your grace and your mercy cover all the things that we have dealt with and are currently dealing with. Lord, we surrender our lives to you. And Jesus, for the people who raise their hand to give their lives to you or rededicate their lives to you, Jesus, I pray that this will be a a moment of great remembrance where they will remember this day as the day where they said, okay, Jesus, I'm in. I'm back in. I'm done living life on my own. I'm done trying to figure this thing out, Lord. I just want to follow you. I want you to lead me. Lord Jesus, we surrender ourselves to you and lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit against the lies that come against us, Jesus. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. Man.